In the heart of the American Southwest, a marvel stands tall, carved by the hands of time itself, beckoning travelers from every corner of the globe. On February 26, 1919, Arizona's Grand Canyon becomes a national park. The Grand Canyon is the product of millions of years of excavation by the mighty Colorado River. Its steep, colorful walls tell the story of two billion years of Earth's history. The geological wonder is 15 miles across at its widest point and more than a mile deep. The first Europeans to discover the canyon were part of Spanish conquistador Coronado's expedition in 1540. In 1869, American geologist John Wesley Powell becomes the first to lead a journey down the entire length of the gorge. He also popularizes the name Grand Canyon. Yellowstone becomes the first national park in 1872. In 1908, four years before Arizona becomes the 48th U.S. state, President Theodore Roosevelt designates 800,000 acres of the Grand Canyon as a national monument. Congress establishes the National Park Service in 1916, and three years later, President Woodrow Wilson establishes the Grand Canyon as the 14th National Park. 5.9 million people visit each year, making it America's second most visited national park. Stay tuned, because coming up, we'll learn more about John Wesley Powell's famous expedition. We'll also learn a little bit about my own visit to the Grand Canyon. Also, don't forget to check out Today in History in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. There's a link in the description. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about Powell. So Powell's expedition is fascinating uh, for sure. It starts in Green River, Wyoming on May 24th, 1869. And then he doesn't exit the Grand Canyon until more than three months later on August 30th, 1869. Now, there were 10 men originally in the expedition. Four of them bail out along the way. And who can blame them? This was... Uh, really a crazy thing to do in these these small wooden boats that he's taking down the mighty Colorado River. Uh, amazingly, nobody died in the expedition, but when they exited the Grand Canyon there at the on the, the southern end, they had only five days of food left. So not a moment too soon, you might say. Now, <laughs> one thing that you may not know about this is that Powell did all of this with one arm because he lost an arm in the Civil War just a few years earlier. Uh, during the expedition, he takes meticulous notes and surveys. He, he does barometric readings. He does all these geological observations. He makes detailed maps. He also does a second journey two years later in 1871. And this really fills in the last major blank space on the US map because it was so little known before Powell's expedition, and understandably so. It's so remote and so deep that you really had to get down there in it to, to start to understand it. Uh, in 1878, he uh, releases um, a report. It's called the Report on the Lands of the Arid Regions of the United States. And this gives his idea for uh, a plan as to how to settle the arid west. He gives ideas for land use and also some ideas for state boundaries. Now. His ideas on state boundaries are very logical. He says you should follow the geography. Now, this was mostly rejected because pretty much, well, I mean, every single state in the western half of the United States has at least one of its borders that is a straight line. And this is totally illogical based on the geography. And part of it is because the, the, the men back east who are doing this really have no understanding of the West. And despite efforts by people like Powell, it's just easier to just put straight lines. And they can't even fathom that it really is what it is, I guess, uh, when they haven't visited there themselves. Uh, so and, and if we look at Arizona's own boundaries, only Ar I live in Arizona, only Arizona's Western boundary has any logic to it whatsoever. Um, and that, of course, follows the Colorado River. Our boundary with, with California is 100% the Colorado River. And part of our boundary with, uh, with Nevada over there on our western side is. But the rest of the, the boundaries are straight lines. Again, I guess the, the southern border with Mexico, you don't really have control over that national border. But the other two are totally illogical. Um, a great example of how illogical these straight line boundaries are in the West is Daggett County in Utah. Um, this is in the, the far eastern part of the state, right up there bordering Wyoming and Colorado. This is a, a tiny county, first of all. It has uh, only about a thousand people in it. And it's totally isolated from the rest of the state of Utah because you have, it's at the base of the Uinta Mountains. And you have this massive mountain range that blocks it from the rest of the state. Uh, 
they probably see themselves really as more almost from Wyoming because that's where they, they need to do anything major because the rest of Utah is not connected to it at all. And so there, there's a totally illogical uh, thing that happens when you just, you know, use a line of latitude to, to make a state boundary. Anyway, uh, I guess the, the one positive that comes out of it is you get unique things like the four corners that Arizona is a part of that, of course, wouldn't exist without these mostly silly straight line boundaries. All right. Um, but so although he doesn't get his way with, with that, uh, Powell's report is hugely influential. It has a major effect on the development of the West's water supply. The biggest thing that he says is that only the federal government can do this, that individual landowners, cities, counties, even state governments cannot possibly handle the massive task that it would be to organize a water supply for this arid land in the West. So that's probably the biggest impact. And, and the Bureau of Reclamation, which is established in 1902, which ironically is or interestingly, I guess you could say, is the year that Powell died. Um, and, and then over the next 60 years, dams, irrigation systems in the West really follow the principles that Powell had advocated in this report. And obviously not exactly, but the, the principles are there. And in honor of him, of course, Lake Powell, the second largest reservoir on the Colorado River is named after him. It's right there on the border with Utah and Arizona and is another stark reminder of how straight line boundaries are illogical. But anyway, enough on that. I've ranted enough. Uh, uh, many Western you know, cities, major cities here in the Western United States, they could not possibly exist without the work of the Bureau of Reclamation following these principles from John Wesley Powell, because we wouldn't have the water and we wouldn't have the electricity. And so that all factors into why it's so important. Now, I moved to Arizona as an adult, and the Grand Canyon is just a few hours away, but it took me 11 years after moving here to finally visit, and I guess that's a, we all suffer from this to some extent, something that's in your own backyard, you always feel like you can go anytime, and you, it's hard to go out of your way to do that. I'm glad that I finally did go see the Grand Canyon, and this was, uh, well, a little over 11 years ago, almost 12 years ago, back in 2012. Uh, we, as a family, we took the train from, well, we drove up to Williams and we took the train from Williams to the south rim of the Grand Canyon. And the train, of course, was fun for my kids. It was fun for me. We, my father was there with us. That was great. And uh, I guess my reaction to the Grand Canyon, uh, it was it was awe-inspiring. Like, you, words cannot express this. And part of it is just, it's impossible to take it all in at once. There's, it's too much. It's so huge. And it honestly, it looks fake when you're, when you're staring at it. it. It literally looks like a painting. Uh, it's the colors. It's just the, 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 the size of it. It, it really is. It, it, it truly is an unbelievable and awe-inspiring sight. And it's a must visit for anybody. Um, if you have not seen the Grand Canyon, it is absolutely worth your time to go and visit this this marvel of the world. Uh, and then on a personal level for me, I'll always have a, a tender spot in my heart for the Grand Canyon because my father, uh, who went along with us on this trip to the Grand Canyon, he hadn't been since he was a kid. Um, uh, he passed away just a few months later. And so it's a great memory for me of that trip with him and for my wife and for my kids also uh, to have that time with my dad at the Grand Canyon is a sweet memory for all of us. All right. Uh, if you've liked what you've seen here on Learn With Mr. Lewis, please make sure to like and subscribe and know that there's another great video here and another one right over here. Thanks again for watching.